Today was the date for the return of writs, which is where we see the Electoral Commission go to the Governor-General to officially hand over the results. Now, legally, you have to have a majority of results ready to be handed over for that date. People may remember we've already had a week's extension uh, for this moment so that the Electoral Commission could get a majority of seats declared. So today he went to the Governor-General and presented 83 of the 118 seats. Uh, so obviously still 35 uh, that are left unaccounted for for the moment, counting continuing uh, there, but the majority of results handed over. So what will happen with the seats that are yet to be declared? Yeah, so we're seeing counting continuing there. In fact, counting's currently happening in, in a few places at the moment. Uh, so the Electoral Commission seeks uh, a, an extension for those specific seats from the Governor-General uh, in order to allow them to complete counting. So we'll likely see more declarations happening. There are a couple of seats where it looks like uh, the election will be declared failed because of issues with um, you know, ballots being destroyed and such. So we're waiting to hear that. But the majority of those 35 seats, counting will continue uh, in the next little while. And, and as I say, we'll see declarations coming in. In fact, we've just seen uh, the first female MP declared uh, in the central governor's seat. So that's just happened this evening. What more can you tell us about her and how significant this is? Yes, yeah, so her name is uh, Rufina Peter. So she was standing under the PNC party, which is the party belonging to former Prime Minister or led by former Prime Minister Peter O'Neill. So um, she was contesting, yes, in the, the central governor's seat. Uh, it's come down to a close race between her and the incumbent, uh, but she has just been declared. Now, people may um, realise that uh, in our last parliament, for the past five years, PNG has had no female MPs, one of only four countries in the world. And there's been growing concern that we could see a repeat of that. Uh, but no, it looks like we'll have at least one. There are a couple more women who are still in, in the race in their seats as well. But at least we know uh, at this point, it certainly won't be an all-male uh, parliament. We'll at least have one, Rafina Peter. That's great news, Nat. Do we know of any other female candidates who might get through? I think the other one that's worth watching closely is Kessie Sawang. She's running uh, for the Rye Coast Open seat, which is uh, out near Medang. Uh, she's, I think, currently sitting second on the primary count. We're still waiting for um, elimination. Obviously, we have preference system here. So we're waiting for the elimination rounds to begin uh, with her counting. But she's currently in second, only by a couple of thousand ballots. It's been quite a tight contest there. She has been leading for parts of it. Uh, so she's another one that, uh, you know, is still very much in the race and potentially could get over the line. There was a court challenge to the return of writs in the parliamentary sitting date. What was the outcome? Yes, that's right. So former Prime Minister Peter O'Neill uh, has filed a Supreme Court application challenging whether Parliament should sit on Tuesday. So the date for the return of writs was set for today and Parliament was uh, set scheduled for Tuesday for everyone to come together and, and vote on who will be um, Prime Minister and, and in government. So Mr O'Neill has filed an application questioning the timing of the announcement uh, around when Parliament should sit and also questioning if Parliament should sit while there are so many MPs uh, outstanding, you know, those who haven't been counted and declared, uh, if Parliament should sit before all of the counting has finished as opposed to just a, a majority. So we saw his legal team go to uh, court this afternoon. So in the hour before we were the expecting to see the writs returned, we were, you know, in the hour before the Electoral Commission was commissioner was preparing to go to government house, uh, we saw a Supreme Court judge hearing uh, arguments about whether there should be an injunction to stop that uh, return of writs happening until we could have a court hearing next week. Now, the Supreme Court judge decided against that. No injunction was awarded, so obviously we did see that return of writs happen. Uh, however, that legal case is ongoing. So there's another date set for it um, for Monday morning, uh, and I expect we'll be hearing more at that point around the challenge of, of whether Parliament should sit the following day. And what else can we expect to see next week? Yes, yeah, so obviously that court date, um, Monday morning, if that all goes ahead, that could affect things. But at the moment, as I say, we've got Parliament scheduled to sit on Tuesday. 
Uh, at that point, we'll see all of the MPs who have been declared come in and they will vote on who should be the Prime Minister. So the party with the highest number of MPs is called on to attempt to form government. That is uh, Pangu, which is uh, the sitting or the incumbent Prime Minister James Morape's party. So at this point, it looks like uh, on Tuesday, he will be, uh, his party and the coalition they've formed will be called on to try to form government and have him voted in as Prime Minister. At the moment, he's looking at a 16-party coalition. So we'll see if uh, that coalition all holds together in the next few days. Um, and obviously also we'll need to see what happens Monday morning with the rest of that Supreme Court challenge.